Today we're talking about five steps to transform your business into an extraordinary brand. Uh, we are going to get through this quick, so hopefully you have enough time to stay with us, even though we're off schedule a little bit. And we'll do some Q&A at the end. So hang on there if you listen to anything, if you've got questions, if there's anything else that uh, you'd like to cover a little bit deeper, then we'll be able to answer your questions at the end. So if you don't know me, my name again is Jennifer Bourne of Bourne Creative. I co-own my business with my husband, Brian Bourne, and these are our kids. And part of our brand is really our work-life balance. It is making sure that we work hard and we play hard and we enjoy both immensely. We're doing this webinar today uh, along with Prestige Conference because I will be speaking at the event there in August doing a branding workshop. And when we were talking about the plan for that workshop and really giving attendees an opportunity to get their hands dirty and get to work on their business instead of sitting through another session, we thought it would be great to bring you an opportunity to dig in on this a little bit in advance and to get some good information for your brand. So first we're going to look at the actual language of branding. The logo versus brand, everybody likes to have that debate. Brand your brand and what's the difference between a brand and branding. Branding versus marketing and what the difference is there. And when you're talking to clients, you might hear, I, I think I get it, but I'm not quite sure. So we're going to dig in, look at these, and how you can apply different aspects of this to your business. And then hopefully it'll give you some language to help better communicate this with your clients as well. So today we're talking about your brand. If you are a freelancer, your personal brand and your business brand might be the same, or you may have your personal brand that you're building and your agency or your business brand. These strategies will work for both. But the common core here is building a brand because when you can transition from a business to a brand, that's when the magic really starts happening in your business. I want you to listen to everything that we talk about in this webinar, not just for what you can get out of it and how it's going to help your business, but I want you again to listen to the language and to look at the process we're using when we're talking about branding and Think about how you talk to your clients about this topic as well. What we're going to do at the workshop at Prestige Conference and then what we're going to do here on the webinar as well applies to you building your brand and then applies to helping you better serve your clients and build their brand as well. So listen to both. Now first, the logo versus a brand. A logo is a noun. It's a thing. It's a visual communication tool. That's it. It's a graphic. People confuse it with a brand, which is also a noun and a thing. But the difference here is that your brand is your reputation. It's what you're known for. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. A lot of people claim credit for this quote, but the person I see it most often attributed to is Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Now, your brand versus your branding. Here's where people start to get tripped up a little bit more. Again, the brand, it's a thing. It's the reputation that you're building. But branding, when you add that ING, it becomes a verb. Now it's an action. It's what you do. It's the strategy behind all of the things that you're doing to build that reputation and to enhance the perception of you and your business among your your audience, your peers, and in your industry. Your reputation online and in the new business world is pretty much the game. So you've got to be a good person. You can't hide anything. This is Gary Vaynerchuk. Your brand, and this he says online, but it's pretty much business in general. Your brand is your biggest commodity. It's your biggest value. It's your biggest worth aspect of your business. It's your best asset. That's why we're focusing on this today and why we're doing an extended workshop session at Prestige. Now branding versus marketing. Again, branding is that verb. It's that strategy in action that you do to increase that mind share in your audience. Marketing, also a verb and an action, but it's different. The goal of marketing isn't to build your reputation, it's to promote an item. It's the strategy and the actions that you do to make a sale 
or to gain a conversion. So a brand is the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that taken together account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or another. Seth Godin. Basically, this is the bottom line of everything we're going to be talking about, is that your brand can make or break your success. It will determine whether they choose you or they choose someone else. So again, your brand is the reputation that you're building. Branding is your positioning in the market. It's how what you do to be remembered, respected, and referred more often. And marketing is about conversion. It's about getting people to hire you, buy from you, or learn from you. Now, lots of people ask me questions all the time, especially at networking events, at conferences, anytime we get to meet in person for the first time, one of the questions I'm always asked is what marketing strategies and tactics do you use to get clients? How have you gotten to where you are you know, today? Can you tell me what, what to do? How can I market my business better? And I always kind of scratched my head and was very confused. So my answer was always I don't focus on marketing. I've never thought about marketing. I focus all efforts on branding. If we look back at the difference here, marketing is getting something, getting people to give you money, getting people to take an action. Branding is establishing a relationship, becoming a go-to resource, becoming someone who's well known for something. Then that's when people start to come to you instead of you chasing them. Now a lot of clients are going to tell you this, and you may have even said it too, because your website always comes last. I just need a presence. I just need something up so that when people search for me, I am there. But the sad thing is, to just have a presence is to just merely exist. That's not exciting. That's not interesting. That's not compelling. To just exist. That's awful. No one should ever want to exist. If a client says, I just need a presence, then you need to have a deeper conversation with them about what their goals are for this project. Now, when you just have a presence, this is what's happening to the potential money you could be earning. It's just getting flushed down the drain because there's nothing exciting, compelling, or interesting about merely existing. And here's what this, your audience is thinking when they come to your site or they interact with you. This is freaking boring. I'm going to move on and go somewhere else. The difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. The difference is your branding. This is the same for personal branding and business branding. If you're not quite where you want to be in your business right now, the difference is the actions that you take on a daily basis. The difference is what you're doing. Are you behaving like someone who's where you're at right now, or are you behaving like someone who is where you want to be? Those actions are going to help you get there, and branding is going to help you get there faster than marketing. You are completely unique. When your brand reflects your uniqueness, when it communicates the value that you deliver and how you're different from other people and why you're the best choice, you become the only choice. When you focus on branding to transform your business into an extraordinary brand, you become the only choice and not just another choice. This is when you start seeing your sales process shift. Instead of people coming to you to find out how much you charge so they can compare it to three other people, now they start coming to you because they know they want to work with you and they're not talking to other people. It's when you become their go-to resource. It's again making it a no-brainer that when you're looking for that one thing that you need among the sea of people that do the exact same service, it's finding that one that is exactly what you need and your goal is to position your brand to fill that need for your ideal clients. So let's dig in a little deeper and look at these five steps to building your brand. 
And then once we've covered those, I want to open it up to Q&A so we can talk a little bit more about your brand or any of the challenges that you may have around your brand. And we will uh, get going. So five simple steps. The first is brand definition. It's defining exactly what you want your brand to be and how you want to show up. Brand positioning is how you want to be perceived in the market by other people. Communication, the way that you communicate your brand, your message, what you stand for, your values, what you do, is critical to the success of your business. Creating that brand consistently across all platforms and looking at how you promote your brand and gain visibility. So let's look at these five closer. Now, as we're talking about these, I want you to remember, simple steps doesn't mean that you don't have to do any work. These are fairly simple concepts, but you're going to have to put in the work, and it's going to take time to achieve. Born Creative is celebrating our 10-year mark. We have been in business for 10 years, officially in July. And a lot of people think, wow, you kind of got famous all fast, or you became really well-known really fast, and what people forget is that We've been doing this for 10 years, and for the first, like, seven, no one had any idea who I was. But it, I have been consistently doing the work over time. And that's where that concept of 10 years to an overnight success comes from. The majority of people who finally reach that pinnacle moment of really achieving the success they set out to do takes time and effort. Many people say 10,000 hours of work, the highly focused work to become successful at one, one item. So simple doesn't mean you don't have to do any work. Just remember that as we're talking. So the first thing that we're going to look at with these five is looking at what other people think about you, what they think about your brand, what they perceive your brand you know, to be, to be about, how you carry yourself. This is what makes up your brand. It's what other people think. It's what other people say about you. It's how your brand is described by a third party. So brand definition is step one. We're looking at the purpose. Why you do what you do. Why are you in business? Why do you want to work with the clients that you want to work with? Then we're looking at your story. How did you get to where you are today? What's your story? What's your background? What's your history? What are your credentials? What's your passion around this? this? Why is this what you chose, right? It's your story. And your story is a big part of the value that you bring to the table. It's your values. It's what you stand for. When you really understand your values, both personally and professionally, you can start to evaluate the decisions that you're making and whether they align with those, and business will become much more enjoyable and much easier. It's about your mission, or sometimes we call this your It's the change or the results. It's the goal or the objective of your brand, that when someone works with you, how do you transform them? How do you change them? What kind of results do you create for them? How do they benefit from that? And again, it's defining what kind of reputation toward a building. What do you want to be known for? If you've never thought about that, it can be really difficult to build a really strong brand because then your communications and your marketing and your branding, everything tends to be all over the place. That's when you see people introduce themselves as an author, a speaker, a blogger, a designer, a crafts person, a cook. I don't even know. They have. It's when you see people introduce themselves as a whole bunch of different things. It's because they're still kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks because one thing hasn't become the thing. So making the decision about what kind of reputation you want to build, what you want to become known for, and integrating all of these other things will define your brand. It will become the platform or the foundation for everything else that you're doing. Again, the decisions that you're making will go back to those values. How people are connecting with you and how they're forming relationships with you will go back to your story and your purpose. What you're doing for your clients will go back to that mission. This is the foundation 
If you haven't taken the time to do this in your business yet, I challenge you to go back to this step one, this brand definition, and define these. If you're not quite sure how to do that, you might want to get a ticket to the live stream or the live event because we're going to be walking you through these with hands-on exercises to actually get it done for your business so you leave with clarity. Now, step two is brand positioning. We're talking about focus. We're talking about selecting your one thing. This goes back to building that relationship. What is the one thing that you are going to specialize in, that you are just going to kill it on, that you are going to build all of your branding and your marketing around? Now, you may say, I do a lot of things. You know, Born Creative is a full service design studio. We do everything related to design, from trade show materials to print to direct mail to, to logo design and brand development to websites to email newsletters and social media and everything in between. But our brand is completely focused on building custom, one-off WordPress publishing platforms. And then we, once we have them hooked with that, then we add on, by the way, if you need all of these other items to support that, we can do that for you as well. Mm -hmm. But everything's focused around that one thing. When you are clear about what it is that you do and what you specialize in, other people can be clear as well. And when they have clarity about what you're great at, you will get much, much, much more referrals. Your referrals will quadruple or even, you know, times 10 because people know exactly what to refer people to you for. Now, this is also when we look at our niche of who we serve, what kind of clients we want to go after. Now, sometimes we hear a lot of designers say, I don't have a niche and a niche, a niche, whatever, however you want to say it. So now, I don't have one. I do, I, I do websites for everybody. Anybody who needs a website, I can do it for. A niche doesn't have to necessarily be the person. Sometimes it could be the service. Like I design a very specific type of website, but I can design it for every type of person. That may be, you may have a service niche instead of a client niche. At Born Creative, we focus you know, our target market, our ideal client, are business owners who are already successful, who have been in business for a while, who are already making money, who already have everything that we do, but it represents where they've been and not where they're going. And they're ready to reassess what they've got and they're ready for a makeover. So you wanna get really clear about what kind of clients you're going after. And to understand the value that you bring. How are you different? What is different when they hire you and they don't hire someone else? What are they going to get with you that they're not going to get somewhere else? What are they going to experience when they work with you? Why should they choose you? Look at that value that you deliver. And then also we're going to be looking at the benefits and the logistics, the big emotional results. You know, the benefits are different than the results. You know, working with you, the result may be an amazing website, but the benefit is that now leads are coming in more consistently, which means they're signing contracts more consistently, which means they have more money in the bank consistently, which means they have less stress because maybe they're not on that roller coaster if, you know, feast or famine, which means they can enjoy their family time more and relax more. You know, figuring out that those big emotional benefits means that you take the result that you get and you continue to ask. And that means they can enjoy what? You know, and that means that it's going to affect this. And that means, and keep going until you get to that big benefit. And logistics, really how you do what you do. Do you not talk on the phone? Do you do everything by email? Do you do video chats? Do you meet people in person? Do you have a membership portal with client information in there? Do you have email, automated email sequences? You know, how do you do what you do and getting that all done? Because that's a positioning element as well. This is a time for intense focus. You are aiming for that target, for a specific client. You are deciding on your one thing and you're going after a very specific kind of client with the results that you get when you have intense focus 
that thing that you're focusing on, that area that you're focusing on tends to grow. And if you're focused on those clients and that one thing, then you're going to get better at that one thing and you're going to start attracting more of those clients. Now, step three is brand communication. We're looking at your tagline. You know, we don't use a tagline on our website anymore, but we have one. And it is transforming businesses into extraordinary brands through websites that work when you're not working. Now, the tagline is the promise that you're making to your clients. It's the expectation set. Your tagline promises them what they're going to achieve or what they can expect when they're working with you or what results they might get. Your bio is a big part of the communication when you're speaking, when you people come to your website, on social media, on uh, LinkedIn, on your resume, wherever it might be. You want to keep it professional, but bring in personality. There are a lot of people that have some really casual about pages on their website that borderline on unprofessional. And when you get to a certain point in your business where you are charging, you know, more money than that bottom level, that entry level, it starts to become unaligned. You need to keep your bio professional, but integrate your personality. If you want a great example of that, visit our website at Born Creative and look at uh, look at our bios. You know, Brian says that he would be a Jedi. I say that I would be a Sith. I also say I've won every game of Disney trivia ever. My bio is very professional, but it integrates some fun personality in there. Clients receive confidence from your professionalism, especially the more money that they spend. We're looking at your message. It needs to be clear, consistent, and constant across all platforms, whether you are on Twitter or Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+. Instagram, your website, your blog, your email newsletter, you're at a networking event, your message must be consistent. Just about the time you're starting to get bored with your brand, your message, your design is usually just about the same time it's really starting to get traction with your audience and it's really starting to be remembered. Most people make the mistake of when they get bored with things, they change it but it's just about that time it's starting to get traction and they're gone and your audience gets frustrated because they're saying, God, I'm just really getting into this. Like I really like what you're doing and you're changing it. And that does not build trust. So your message needs to be clear, consistent and constant. Your vocabulary is part of your communication. How you talk about your craft, the language that you use, how you explain it, you know, steering clear of technical jargon and buzzwords and all of that. But, the phrases, you know, we use remembered, respected, and referred. I often use, you know, the hire me, buy from me, and learn from me. That no like, trust, conversion. Those things become a part of your brand vocabulary as you're talking with clients. And then also the mediums, where you're communicating your brand and where it needs to be more business and where it can be a little bit more personal to help people get to know you. Because when they know you, they have an opportunity to decide if they like you and then they build trust and that may lead to that conversion of them finally giving you their money. So get off Slack. <laughs> so many of us are obsessed with these private little groups and we're in there all day long. Frankly, I don't know how some people get any work done because they're in there so much. If I were in there that much, I couldn't get any work done. These channels are fun, but they're more than likely not going to bring you a lot of clients. Yes, there are exceptions where other people may refer business to you, but you've got to get out of these private little chat groups and you've got to communicate your brand. You've got to get your message out there. You need to help your audience understand your vocabulary and they need to start associating it with you. And the only way that they can do that is to hear that over and over and to see you in their social feeds or in their inbox or online multiple times multiple times. Now, step four is brand creation. It's the strategy. It's guiding people through that process of getting to know you, of figuring out that they like you, they like your perspective, they like what you have to say, that they trust you, that you are the expert you say you are, and that conversion to get them to take action, to hire you, buy from you, or learn from you. Creating your brand 
needs to take engagement into account. How do you want people to take action? What do you want them to do when they get to your website? You know, what do you want them to do when they discover your profile on social media or they come across a blog post? Your copywriting is a critical part of creating and building your brand. It needs to spark curiosity and compel them to take action, to bookmark it, to subscribe, to follow you on Twitter, to put you in a list, you know, to friend you on Facebook, to leave a comment, whatever it might be. Your copywriting is going to be the thing that ultimately gets them to take action. Design in conjunction with great copywriting can do amazing things for you. It gives people visual cues. Mm -hmm. It gives them visual opportunities to figure out where to go and what to do next. Design is going to help you build trust. It communicates the level of professionalism that you want to that you want to show. And it's also going to guide them to take action. The design is going to help people move through a website. It's going to help people click something from social media. It's going to help people save that direct mail piece. And then also, it's the execution. It's a consistent experience across all platforms, and it's quality. Check your work on every browser and every device you can. Do not tweet out a link to a website that is broken on mobile. This goes for client projects. This goes for your projects. This goes for print projects. Check your work and make sure that any work you're putting out with your name attached to it is at the level of quality that you want to charge for. If you want to demand high fees, you better demand higher quality. You will be held to a higher standard the more money you charge. So check your work and check everything that represents you that you put out there into the world. Creating your brand is creating a path. It's creating an experience. It's creating a journey for your audience to, again, get to know you, to like what you have to say, to trust you, and then to take an action to either hire you, buy from you, or learn from you. Now, the last step, the fifth step, is brand promotion. We're talking about networking, getting out from behind your computer and making real relationships with people. And I know WordCamps are fun, and I know designer meetups and developer meetups and WordPress meetups are fun. And it's a great place to find strategic partnerships and potential employees or to find a job or to network in industry, but it is equally important, if not more important for many of us to get out to events that are not in your bubble and not in your industry. Search out events where your ideal clients are going to be. Look for events where the people in the room hire people like you, where there's a chance you could be the only person that does what you do in that whole room. Look for events where the person on stage or the person speaking is speaking about how important what you do is. Or is speaking about how to build a business online or you know how to build a great website or how to launch an online course. Go in and network with people at things like that because when they say, what do you do? You can say all the things they just told you on stage that you need, I do. And the chances of you getting business are going to skyrocket. So get out there and network to make real relationships with people. Promoting your brand is also about content. Content gets clicks. SEO Moz published an article. Um, I just saw it came through my Twitter feed this morning. They said across, you know, the millennials, Gen X, and boomers, still the number one piece of content preferred is a blog post. As much as video and webinars and all of these things are popular among those of us that live online, the general public still prefers blog posts across all age levels. Probably because I can't watch a webinar sitting at karate while my son's taking a class, or while I'm at the dentist waiting for my daughter to get her teeth cleaned, or someone who's sitting in a cube. They can't watch a webinar because someone might hear it, but they can read blog posts. They can read them on their phone. Content matters. And visibility is critical. People cannot give you money if they don't know that you exist. 
They can't hire you, buy from you, or learn from you if they have no idea that you are there. People are searching for what you do every day. It is your job to make sure that you are visible so they can find you and you can help them. Social media is a great tool for brand promotion because it helps people get to know you personally and it helps people get to know your business. And when people know you personally, it's a stronger relationship than with a brand and they're more likely to hire you because people do business with people. Most of the time they don't do business with a brand, they do business with people. It's the same idea as people don't quit companies, they quit managers. You know, people don't fire designers or developers and move on because of the brand. It's because of the person they were working with and the same goes for hiring them. They're probably not hiring you just because of a brand. They're hiring you because of the relationship they have with you or because they know you or because they built trust in you or they've seen you in their feed over time and they know that you do good work. And then it's also marketing and SEO comes into effect. Positioning your brand in the market requires marketing, it requires SEO, but it's not a hard push of selling a product or pushing an offer. It's a soft strategy to invite new people in, to invite new people to get to know you through a blog post or at an event or to see you speak or to come to Prestige and come to my workshop, you know, whatever. It's that soft sell of helping people engage and interact with your brand and discover what you can do and how you can help. So again, speaking is a great way to gain that visibility, getting out at networking events, being present on social media. I'm sure you've seen there are a lot of people um, in every industry across the board that become internet famous, not because they're the best at what they do, but because they're the most visible. Visibility does matter. Now again, we're gonna take questions in a minute, but I'm really encouraging you, we could get all this done for your business together with hands-on exercises. You're gonna gain clarity and you're gonna improve your business. We're gonna give you worksheets, we're gonna make you do some work, we're gonna work on your business together so you can learn these tools and how to do this for your business, not only for you, but for your clients. At Prestige Conference, so join me August 1st to 2nd, 2015. Grow your business, elevate your career, and frankly, evolve as a person because these events do that for you. Visit prestigeconf.com to get your tickets. Come live or join us via live stream if you can't join live. And I think this is time for Q&A. If you are still with us, if you've got any questions, I am, uh, I'm here to tell you whatever you want. So we have two ways for you guys to ask questions for Jennifer. You can ask them through the uh, Google Plus event page, and I am monitoring comments there, or you can join us in the Google Plus event, which is linked in the comments on the event page, and uh, type it into the group chat field. You can also, uh, if you're a little shy and don't want to ask your question here, you can follow up with Jennifer directly. Her information is at the bottom of the screen right now. Jennifer, do you want to start with maybe one of the common questions that you tend to get a lot? Um, sure. The I would say when it comes to you know building a brand, one of one of the questions that I get asked you know the most is how long it takes. You know, I frankly have no patience, so I like things to happen immediately, <laughs> and a lot of people do as well. But one of the things you want to understand about building a brand is that it's the long game and that every action that you take, especially online, because you are so visible, is an opportunity to build your brand. But at the same time, it's an opportunity to harm it as well. You know, it can take years to build an amazing brand and it can take one tweet to absolutely obliterate your brand in the eyes of someone else. And I've seen it happen multiple times. You know, not everybody is going to think the same thing. So, you know, you just want to look at being really careful about, especially online, how you represent your brand. Think about every tweet that you post, if you use that account for personal and business, 
every Facebook status, every LinkedIn post, every Google Plus post, every Instagram picture, every request that you make of someone else, every blog post. It's an opportunity for you to either build your brand in the eyes of your audience or to harm your brand. So think about how you want to be known and before you post. Granted, it's not as fun this way, but you want to ask yourself, is this A, aligned with my values? Does this B, support the goal of building the reputation that I want to build? Is this going to help me build that reputation? Help me become known for that one thing? And then two, is this going to further my brand? And when you ask the, yourself those things, you know, one, it's going to do great things for your brand, but two, it'll do good things for you personally as well, because it will prevent you from posting some of those things that are less savory. <laughs> I think that's fantastic advice. So far, we do not have any questions yet for you. Perfect. I'm guessing everybody is excited to see you and attend your workshop at Prestige Conference in August. And... Um, we really appreciate having you on today. We'll be making this video available, and we certainly appreciate appreciate everyone that hung with us through some of the technical difficulties we had at the beginning. We look forward to seeing you again in August and also connecting with you online. You can reach Jennifer at, at Jennifer Born or at Born Creative on Twitter. You can find Prestige Conference at, at Prestige Conf on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. Any last words, Jennifer? I would say, you know, don't be discouraged if things don't happen right away. You might not think that people are paying attention or listening, but you would be surprised how many people really are looking at what you're doing and what you're posting. And even though they might not be ready to engage, you might be making a great difference in somebody else's life or their business. So hang in there and give it time. And I promise if you're consistent, you're constant in your action and you've got a good message, that people will support you. And Jennifer, I'm sorry, I know I just said we were gonna wrap up, but we have a question from Paul. Paul asked, is there an effective way to separate personal goofball Facebook identity and the professional business side of Facebook? Oh goodness, no. <laughs> so there are a lot of people that have tried over the years, me included, to have personal Facebook and business Facebook, i.e. a profile and a page. But the problem is pages perform horribly. Most people, the statistics show that once they like a page, they never ever visit it again. And if they haven't turned on notifications from you, they may never see anything that you post again because Facebook makes it so that pages don't really get any kind of benefit unless they give them money. So it's difficult to straddle the profile and the page and get the same results. Most people have merged, you know, the two together or they, you know, represent their business in both places because their profile gets more visibility and performs better than posting something on their page. Um, so again, it's like when your mom joins Facebook and you think now I have to really watch what I say and I can't say anything that might hurt anybody's feelings or make somebody mad. Your business, it's the same kind of thing, right? It makes it a little bit less fun because you are probably aren't going to post a keg stand photo on Facebook if you're using it for business. But you have to ask yourself, is this a platform I'm going to use for business or is this a platform I'm going to keep personal? You know, a lot of people use Instagram and they keep it personal. They keep business off of it. And then they take Facebook and they use it more for business or, you know, you've got to decide how you want to use those platforms. But I would say, especially if you're a freelancer or you're a small company, you are very much what you do. You are very much part of your business. Your personal brand and your business brand may not be that different. And trying to keep the two really separate is going to be a lot more stressful and it's going to be a lot more difficult to when instead you just integrate them both and say, you know, this is who I am. I'm, you know, do these wacky things on the side and I do this for a living and you either like all of me or you don't like any of me and the right people will show up and that's a much easier, less stressful place to be. Would you like to say anything about the difference since Facebook has some special permissions that can be set of posting publicly versus to just specific groups of friends or professional contacts? 
I think that if you want to put that much effort into Facebook and every time you post, choose an audience, that is something that you have to choose to do. But <laughs> I, but I agree. I know it's a big it's, time investment. It's exhausting. And who wants to have to do that? You know, I just, I have always taken the the approach of you either, you know, I, I am who I am. I'm a designer. I'm a mom. I like to cook. You know, I like to go outside and travel and all of these other things. And you either like me or you don't. You're either going to like all of my stuff or you're going to not like all my stuff. And you either choose to or not. And the right people who are meant to be my clients or my friends or my network are going to be good with that. And the people that aren't, well, they probably were never going to give me any money or be an engaging, wonderful part of my life anyway. It's a great answer, Jennifer. Thank you. I think that is our last question now. So Perfect. again, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you in August. Sounds great. We'll see you then. Are we offline? We are ending right now. OK.